I guess I'll say this. I don't know if the other instructor said this. Because uh, there's different, there's a newer standard, and I say new, like the last seven years or something, for STP, different than probably your high school textbook has. I teach the new one, but some other instructors teach the old one. What I did is I just removed the STP term from the final, so I just put the numbers in. Yeah, so not a deal. What's frequency? Uh, it's uh, a hertz, or one over second. It's the number of cycles per second. Okay, cool. Check. Um, kinetic energy. Did this mean kinetic energy? Kinetic theory of gases. That's what that meant? Okay. So, uh, what I would recommend you know from the kinetic theory of gases is a couple things. Uh, so, we'll just do this quickly. It'll be more conceptual, I guess. Uh, first of all, know the five assumptions. So, for this is page 50 of my reader. It's also in the text. Uh, like gases are made up of tiny molecules, elastic collisions, energy is proportional to the temperature, things like that. There's five of them. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much the main thing to know. The other things you might want to know are like the kinetic energy. There's two formulas for it. The one half m is squared. And also uh, the three halves are t. Uh, the collision frequency, uh, what I did is I just did velocity times number of particles over the volume. And then momentum, uh, usually it's written P. I wrote an I here as mass times velocity. That's kind of the main thing. The formulas here are really the uh, kinetic energy is 3 halves RT. Also finding the root mean square velocity is big. Uh, let's see what else is big in that category, this subject. Root mean square velocity Graham's law. And then how real gases differ from this. Well, see, those are the kind of core things to get out of it. When you use the kinetic theory of gases, the cool thing about it is you derive the ideal gas law. So the ideal gas law is derivable. Okay, so that's mostly conceptual, except for the kinetic energy calculation, root mean square calculation, and the Graham's law calculation. Okay, next. Uh, uncertainty. Guess let's do that. Okay, uh, the formula would be this. I would, and you have to think about on the final, before you start, what are the things you're going to write on the back page to remind yourself of that you may forget, you know, as you're taking it. So what are those things? For this formula, if you would forget uh, the simpler way that I sometimes write it, first of all, I say, well, x, uh, the momentum, p is just mass times velocity. I'm writing u for velocity. Some of your instructors might have written a v. And then you can write it equals here if that makes your life better. It's really greater than, but you can write it equal. Uh, when you see, really, this is just any distance. So it could be a radius, a length, something like that. Something in meters or centimeters or something. Uh, then you've got a mass, and then you're going to have a velocity. And in here, they're going to give you a percent, like a precision or an accuracy. That's classic, this sort of question. So it's going to be a multiplier in here. The delta doesn't mean uh, change of, the, like you might be used to, like change in velocity, it means the uncertainty of the velocity. So if I'm having you calculate, say, the velocity, you're not finding the actual velocity, you're finding how uncertain you are about your ans the actual velocity. Meaning, the larger the value you calculate, the more uncertain you are. The smaller the value you calculate, the more certain you are about the actual velocity, okay? And this is going to be equal to h over 4 pi. So I would consider this a merely a plug and chug sort of question. 
all of these are constants, you're going to be given a percentage. It's going to be a multiplier. The mass is often what mass? The mass of the electron, which we won't give you, but you will find on the back page. If it's the mass of something else, we need to specify that other mass. But if we say something like, it's a hydrogen atom, what mass are you looking for? Not this. It's never this. So that's what trips people up. If we mean hydrogen, there's one electron, we're talking about the electron. Okay? So, uh, if it's something else, it would be something that's usually small, like a proton, or a neutron, or something like that. So it's usually one of those things. It could be larger, like something silly, like a baseball. But the mass, it's not given, it's probably the electrons, what we're referring to. And then the distance and the velocity are one of the two unknowns. So one will be given, and the other one is found. So it's plug and chug, literally. Okay, from here. So if you need to rewrite it, I think of it, you might think of it in a way like this. Okay? All right, but conceptually, just know you're not finding that the velocity per se, you're finding the uncertainty of the velocity. Okay, next. Yeah? Everything, how do you know the percentage? Everything has to be given. So everything's given, but either the distance or the velocity. So literally, it's in the problem. If it's not in the problem, it might be like the mass of electron on the back page, for example. And then you'll want this in SI units. That's my recommendation, not a requirement. But I recommend it so much, I'll put a couple explanations. Uh, explanation okay, yes. What's on the back page? Oh, did I? Uh, I, uh, did I? Oh, I have it. Huh. I don't even, I won't even speak to it, I'll just show you. It's the back of the exam, you're welcome. I think Mercury also posted this, I don't know who else posted it. That's one, you have about five more seconds to take a picture of it if you want. And, this. Okay. Next. Uh, one last thing, would you rather see particle in a box or Dalton? Dalton, okay. Choose your own adventure, right? Dalton. Uh, it can be set up a couple different ways. This is a mixture of gases. If you see a mixture of gases, it's probably a Dalton's law. So, the mixture plus something like a partial pressure or mentioning of pressures pins you to Dalton's law. If it's a mixture, but then we want a ratio, or we mention time, or rate, or amount, uh, or distance, we're talking about Graham's law. Both of those involve mixtures, but pressure pins you or leads you to Dalton's law as it's probably something like this. The two sorts of setups that are pretty typical is either you're putting two, say, gas A and B together in one container, uh, so they're separate and then you put them together, or there's some sort of structure where there's a valve blocking the mixing of two gases, say A and B, and so you know the initial, they open the valve and then they mix. This is the same type of problem. It's just a slightly different way of setting it up. There could be more gases, C, gas C, gas D, what have you. But typically you'll see two. So here's where you'll want to know that the mole fraction, say of component I, is a partial pressure of I divided by the total pressure, or the moles of I, divided by the total moles. This is usually written in different ways, but that was classically called Dalton's Law. And then uh, you also want to know a couple things like the sum of the mole fractions, say component I and component J equals what number? If you sum up their mole fractions. 
One, yeah, that'd be exactly one. Uh, you could also know that the sum of the partial pressure, say it's I and J component, equal the total pressure. Sum of the moles will equal the total moles, etc. So it's a variation of those kind of uh, laws. Plus, you're often going to use the ideal gas law here, or I do. Not everybody does. It depends how you're solving it. If you're in my class, you've always seen me solve it using the ideal gas law, but there are variations on how you could solve it, and the ideal gas law is not always necessary. So, Question. Yes. What's J? Another gas. Okay. So what's J or I? They represent different gases. Gas I, gas J, gas K, etc. Okay. So, Let's say we're taking the se second example. Let's say we've got hydrogen and helium. Let's say you know the pressure, volume, and temperature here, and the pressure, volume, and temperature there. Okay? And you are usually asked for things like the total, uh, Partial pressure of hydrogen upon mixing, partial pressure of helium upon mixing. Uh, those sorts of things are the common types of questions you could be asked. So what I would do, I usually go through moles first. If you are in my class, that's how you see, how you see me solve. So what I'm going to do in this case, usually two things are could be given to start off with. The easier one to be given is the mass. If you're given the mass of helium and the mass of hydrogen, Use the periodic table, or the molar mass, to convert to moles. In this case, it's the harder example, where you're given pressure, volume, and temperature. In that case, if you want to find the moles of H2, you would have to go P, V, over R, T. Just make sure to use all the hydrogen numbers to do that one. For helium, you do the same thing, P, V, over R, T, just make sure and use the helium numbers for this one, okay? So then what you would do is say, okay, I want to find the total moles. N total is the moles of hydrogen plus the moles of helium. Once you've got here, you've pretty much solved the problem. So now you're home free if you can get to this point. I've got to move this to fit it all. So now what you're going to do is say, okay, one of the things I want is the partial pressure of hydrogen. That'll be the uh, moles of hydrogen over the moles total times P total. No moles. Total. And then you want the mole, the partial pressure of helium. So you're almost there. Notice that we have the moles of hydrogen. We have the moles of helium. And we have the total moles. Check and check. We've got all those numbers. The only thing we don't have is P total. If you need P total, which you would, what you're going to do is say, OK, P total, P, Use the ideal gas law. Here's where I do this a little bit different than some other instructors, I guess. I don't know what they do. Uh, so if you want P total, I'll just put a little total there. The temperature, usually the temperatures of both will be given. So the, the temperatures of hydrogen and temperature of helium will be the same number. And so you just put that number here. What amount of moles do you think you would need here? The total, which you already have. I'll put a little check mark. It's right here at the top of the screen. How would you find the volume? What is this volume? Yeah, it's the volume from the hydrogen side of the container plus the volume from the helium side of the container or what we would call V total. Once you have P total, you can put it in this equation up above and you'll be home free. Okay, 
I'm going to pause right there. I hope this is helpful for you.